welcome back to the Stitches and Scribbles channel. My name is Erin and I have another tutorial for you today. So we're continuing our washcloth series here on this channel with another crochet washcloth. This one is half double crochet in the third loop. So it's a fun textured stitch that gives you these little almost braided looking ridges. And as you can see, it looks absolutely lovely in a variegated yarn. I love how this piece worked up. I think it's so fun. Um, but this is a fairly beginner friendly pattern if you're looking to add some pizzazz to the stitches that you've been learning. So let's jump into the tutorial. For today's crochet tutorial, you're going to need a couple of different supplies. The first is your hook. I am using a 5mm crochet hook because that's what the yarn label calls for. I also have a pair of scissors ready as well as a yarn needle for weaving in ends. The yarn I've chosen to use for this tutorial is the Lily Sugar and Cream in the color Psychedelic. This is a plain cotton, heavy duty yarn um, commonly found in craft stores and it makes great scrubby washcloths that are durable but also fun and colorful. So that is my preferred yarn to use for projects like this. To start you're going to want to pull out a little bit of your yarn so that you can work with it. Mine came out in a little bit of a yarn barf, which is why I'm currently untangling off camera. <laughs> I feel like this always happens when I film tutorials, but if I'm not filming a tutorial, then I don't get the yarn barf. Okay, here we go. Finally have my yarn pulled out. And I believe for my last washcloth, I did 30 stitches for my chain starting row so I'm going to do the same with this one. So I'm going to start by making a slip knot, then insert my hook into that slip knot so that I'm ready to start my chains. In order to make the chain stitch you wrap your yarn around the hook and pull it through the loop. So that's one, wrap and pull through again, that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Maybe I only did twenty stitches. I gotta hold up my other <laughs> one that I made. Maybe I did twenty-five. Let's do twenty-five. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. That looks about right. It doesn't really matter how many stitches you do for this, but because I'm making these these washcloths from the tutorials I'm doing as a set, I do kind of want them to match. The stitch that we're doing for this washcloth is called the half double crochet stitch. And in order to do that, I actually need one extra stitch on the end to be my turning chain. Now I'm going to skip the chain I just made and my first stitch is going to be worked into that second stitch from my hook. To start the half double crochet you're going to wrap your yarn around the hook once, almost like you're about to do another chain stitch. Instead you're then going to insert your hook into that stitch, pull through a loop once, then you're going to wrap again and pull through all three loops on your hook preferably without splitting the yarn like I did. So your stitch should look like that, where all three loops are kind of combined together. Let's do another one. Wrap your yarn, insert your hook, pull a loop through one stitch, and then pull a loop through all three stitches. Just like that. What this gives you is a stitch that is slightly taller than a single crochet but not as tall or as um, full of holes as a regular double crochet. So half double crochet kind of gives you a little bit of extra height without creating too many holes in your fabric. We're going to keep doing half double crochets all the way across. And in order to give this washcloth a little bit of pizzazz, instead of doing just plain old half double crochets for every row, we're going to add something special after this first row to make it just a little bit more fun. 
I love how the colors in this yarn are working together. This is a really fun variegated yarn pattern. And one final half double crochet in that last stitch. And you can pull on your loop a little bit as well if it got loose. Now we're going to turn our work and we're going to chain one to have that chain starting stitch. Now we're going to yarn over and we're still going to do a half double crochet stitch but instead of working through that top V of the crochet stitch like we would normally do, we're going to do a half double crochet in the third loop. This kind of slightly diagonal but mostly horizontal bar right here is the third loop. So that's where we're going to insert our hook, pull through one, pull through all three. Now we're going to find the next one and it's this next diagonal stitch right here. It's not the smaller one, it's the wider one that will be a little easier to work into. And we're going to do that all the way across. And you can't really see what it's doing yet because the special effect is currently on the other side of the work, but we'll see it in a second. I have to pull out some more yarn. There we go. Keep doing your half double crochets across. You might have just heard my heat kick off in the video. It's a little chilly here. So I apologize for any background noise that might be caused by my heat kicking on or off. Half double crochet definitely decreases the amount of time you spend working on projects as opposed to plain single crochet just because of that extra height. I find that my stitches move just a little bit faster. Alright, the one that can be a little tricky to work into is that last stitch. So you can see we've got that like bar that we don't work into here and this is the one we do work into. So it looks a little bit more diagonal on the last stitch. There we go. Then when you turn it over, you get this fun braided effect going across your work that'll show up every other row. So now if we do our half double crochet in the third loop again, we'd get our first braided bar on the opposite side. And this is not only fun to look at, especially in a variegated yarn like this, it's gonna give us a little bit more texture to add to the functionality of this as a dishcloth. But it's also just a really pretty stitch to use decoratively on other projects. I'm going to go ahead and keep working this up, as can you, and I'll show you what it looks like in a couple of rows so you can see my progress. Here's what my washcloth looks like a third to halfway in. I have those nice braided stitches running horizontally, and I have them on the reverse side as well. So you just want to keep going until your washcloth reaches your desired length, but it should probably be about square in shape. And when you are done with your washcloth, it should look something like this, so roughly square in shape. And to finish it off when you're on that last loop, you just trim your yarn so that you have enough to weave in the ends and pull it through that final loop. Then you just need to weave in your ends and your washcloth is complete. That's going to be it for this washcloth tutorial. Um, over the next couple weeks and months, I'm going to be doing some tutorials on how to add edging to your washcloths. So if you've been following along with the washcloth series, either the knit ones or the crochet ones, you'll also get a couple of options to add some edging to your washcloths to give them a little bit of an extra finishing touch. So make sure to watch out for those right here on this channel. Speaking of watching out for videos, I would love it if you considered subscribing. The button should be down below this video, and then you can be notified of all of my crafty content right here on YouTube. 
And if you'd like to follow me on other social media sites, that information will be in the description box of this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, everyone.